Hey everybody, Jessa Zimmerman here. I'm doing a bi-weekly Facebook Live presentation based on my podcast episodes. So if you haven't heard, I've got the Better Sex Podcast. And exciting news, I'm gonna start releasing it weekly instead of every other week. I have so many interviews recorded and so many more ideas. I just thought, all right, we're gonna go weekly. Uh, but I like to come and follow up after an interview and talk a little bit about one of the topics that's been discussed. And today I wanna talk about Tantra. So I had Matthias Rose on the show uh, it's episode five, and he is a Tantra uh, practitioner, a teacher, and a healer, and he came on the show to talk all about what Tantra is, uh, what it's good for, who uses it, and what it's like to work with him as a healer, and I'm just going to give you some of the highlights of that conversation. Uh, if you really want to know it all, you should go listen. I put in the uh, description here the, the uh, link to the show, but it is at bettersexpodcast.com. So basically, he described that Tantra is a practice of embodied spirituality. Um, which developed thousands of years ago. And I, I think he said the earliest writings were in India way back when. Um, and basically, unlike so much of spirituality, it really celebrates our body and the material world um, in a different way than, you know, some of some religions or spirituality is about sort of escaping the physical. Um, but Tantra is really about celebrating the physical. You know, our life right now, the body we're in, the world we live in, and that that is the path to awaken the divine and the Tantra is, you know, a series of tools and techniques that reveal who we really are. So I'm just using my agenda here for the first time. Um, so when I asked him what Tantra isn't, he said it isn't hedonism. It's not about the pursuit of pleasure, although there's plenty of pleasure in the process potentially, but it's about authenticity, right? It's about discovering um, who we are. He also made it clear that sexuality, um, is just one slice of the pie of Tantra. Like in the West, we tend to think it's all about these sort of mystical sexual experiences or something, but Tantra is about the whole range of physical experience. Um, and sexuality is just one slice of that pie. That is the slice though that we were talking about on the show, just so you know. Um, so in, in talking about what are the uses of Tantra besides you know, just the exploration of that. I mean, that's one of them, right? Exploring your physical body, your sensation, your authenticity, revealing who you are. Um, it can be explicitly useful in pursuing, uh, learning what brings you pleasure and what you want. It's very useful in terms of um, getting in touch with boundaries, who you, who you are, where you stop, what you want, what you're willing to engage with. It can be very useful um, for healing trauma, uh, potentially because you're really in your body sort of reclaiming a sexuality. And um, well, he goes into more detail on that. And it's also useful in treating or improving sexual dysfunction. So people that have you know, premature ejaculation or erectile dysfunction or orgasm problems, things like that can all be kind of treated through tantric healing. Um, okay, another thing he talked about at some length was this idea of story. So while tantra is about us being in our body and in the present moment, um, story is where most of us live, right? Our, in our head. We've got ideas about what's going on. And specifically with sex, we're often, we're watching ourselves sometimes, or we're caught up in fantasy in our mind, or we're thinking about something else, or we're sort of this meta view, this balcony view of what we're doing, whether we're watching or whether we're thinking about what we're doing. All of that is story, right? Or if we're caught up in self-criticism or doubt, or how am I doing, or what's my partner think? I mean, all that kind of stuff our thoughts and story, right? Which remove us from the actual moment we're in with the actual person <laughs> that we're being sexual with. So this whole idea of being present and learning to be present in the moment and nothing more than that is a big part of Tantra uh, and very useful. Uh, he basically was talking about the, the first step, you know, we all spend so much time in story, right? The first step is to notice when you're in story and make an exercise of coming back to the present moment, a lot like mindfulness practice, right? There's thoughts or meditation, thoughts go by, I'm not gonna grab those, I'm gonna bring my attention back to the breath, I'm gonna bring my attention back to right now or my body sensations. Um, and then, then we talked about what's it like to work with a tantric healer. So he is a professional tantric healer. Um, and he, you know, he talked about the value of discovering somebody's training, like he went to a very reputable, rep reputable school, not that I can remember the name of it, and there are several of those, but there really isn't a certifying body, there's no um, enforcement of the ethical standards, you know, so you, 
it's sort of a buyer beware situation. So it's important to, you know, ask about their training if you're going to work with somebody. Think about getting rec recommendations or referrals if you can. Um, certainly see if they offer a free consultation so that you can meet in person and talk about what's the person's training, what's their approach, what's what are their personal boundaries, and how open are they to hearing from you about what you want to achieve and what your boundaries might be. And we talk, let's see, uh, see if there's anything else in my notes here. Um, so you want to be specific about what you're looking for, and you can certainly expect to get some guidance from the healer or the practitioner about what they envision for working with you. And just make sure you feel like that's all been heard and understood and respected. So our episode ended with specific exercises or ideas that you could put into practice um, right away to sort of play with some of these ideas. So he talked about extended eye gazing, where you sit, you know, face to face on chairs or, or on the floor, wherever is comfortable, and you just hold each other's gaze for a long time without thinking about hiding or uh, worrying about what you're communicating. Um, and he talked about or sometimes really transformative experiences come from that. The second thing he talked about was breathing together, which you can do in sort of an eye gazing sense, but you could certainly do it in sex too. What's it like to breathe in and out at the same time and synchronize your breathing? And then the reverse is also true. What's it like for you know me to breathe in and you to breathe out to sort of have this alternate breathing? Be either way you're synchronizing with your partner and that that's a way of being in your physical body and of connecting energetically with who you're engaging with. And then he also described uh, what's called the three minute game. And I'm not going to describe that for you here, but that is another little exercise to work on some of these ideas. So that sort of covers what, uh, what Matthias and I talked about in the episode. You can find it at bettersexpodcast.com slash five. I would love to have comments or feedback about what you think about it. I also always want to hear, you know, what else you want to hear on the, on the podcast or if you've got questions, because I want to incorporate what I'm delivering with what interests you. And uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, um, if you type join in the comments, you will get a prompt that allows you to join my mailing list. That's where you'll get a lot of information delivered right to your email if you're interested in more. So thanks and hope I'll see you soon. <laughs>